Welcome, everybody, and thank you very much for joining us. Uh, my name is Mark Miller, Director of Goodfoot, and I'm uh, joined by Sue Blight, uh, an executive coach. A lot of experience in uh, senior roles in manufacturing, Sue. Seen a lot of changes. Uh, and we'll Absolutely. be talking about changes in organizations, uh, some of the major changes we're facing at the moment um, in the short video series together. So I'm wondering if um, perhaps we could start uh, with a little bit about yourself. Yeah, sure. Um, well, I have a, a long um, career in talent and learning and development. My mm -hmm. last job was very much about um, the talent pipeline and looking at where we had skill shortages, what right. we needed to do about it. Um, but latterly, as, as an independent, um, I trained at Henley in coaching and behavior change, uh, had, had a master's there to really make sure that my coaching was um, was was as best as it could be sure. um, and now I'm uh, a freelancer uh, an exec coach um, right. really covering a lot of senior managers at different levels across different sectors such sure. as pharma manufacturing um, finance sector so um, I guess my interest in this comes from my um, uh, the thoughts I have around resilience and uh, we talk a lot about that um, but I think just starting to notice these different trends that are uh, starting to take place in organizations and this idea of the great resignation has really piqued sure. my interest. And, and you mentioned you, um, you, you you're, for your career you've been pretty focused on talent mm. and that uh, sort of getting it developing it keeping it uh, and the cost of replacing it is huge right and we're facing a a massive change of attitude mm -hmm. and those with talent or sometimes those who just think they have talent uh we'll get into that later so are you yeah. they're, they're, they're very optimistic about their talent but they're in a very good negotiating position certainly in it in construction facilities management this sort of arena um, and it's giving organizations a lot of challenges as to how do we keep and brexit brexit had that effect too mm. companies that i know where they've traditionally been able to acquire european talent instantly and, and now they're really struggling to go through the process of bringing yes. that talent here. So um, why, why is this challenge of talent happening now? There seems to be a churn, you called it the great resignation suit, which I think, I think um, and I've seen a phrase around it, it seems to be a very powerful description of what actually is happening. People are looking to change job, aren't they? Yeah, and I think there's always been certain sectors that are, um, have have an absence of of talent or the right talent so oh. engineering is a classic example when i was in corporate life it wasn't necessarily about technical it was more about um do they have the people management skills that balance that technical um aspect as well so i i know we struggled with with that in my in my last organization i think oh. what's different now is through the pandemic, I think uh, a lot of people have taken time out to think about what they really want to do. Um, certainly in my coaching, they talk a lot about purpose. What, right. what do I want to get out of my career? But I think there's some real practical things as well that the pandemic has thrown up about um, uh, you know things like working from home. Uh, yeah, before yeah. that was never thought possible now people yeah. are thinking about well in a hybrid working situation could I um, you know could I commute for 90 minutes a day if I only have to go in twice a week so yeah. that actually means I, I've got a bit more freedom sure. around where I want to live um, but I think also the working from home has created um you know the rise in mental anxiety burnout and this idea that people are always on um so mm. if i go off and do something sure, at sure. home i feel guilty because i've been away from my desk and and i think all of that has started to get people to really think about well right. you know it, do i want to be like this for the there's, rest of my life there's some there's some big questions happening isn't there and, and mm. Um, I saw what an amusing incident, a, a sort of illustration of that, Sue. It was yesterday, a cartoon was sent through to me, a person going for a job, and, and then they were interviewed for the job. And the, and the, the question was, um, are you happy with our home working uh, policy? And the answer is, 
no, you're not putting me in the office enough. I want to get away from the family. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I guess we've all been in, in a um, in a shock, haven't we? Let's be honest about it. During the COVID years, uh, first COVID year, we had no idea. I remember walking past somebody smoking in the street and thinking, am I going to die in the next two or three days? Because mm. I don't know what's in the smoke. And I don't um, know whether I picked it up. I mean, it looks, sounds a little crazy now, but at that time, our justifiable paranoia was very high we were very very worried and we've been yeah. through a not just covid i think you were right we've been through covid it's actually been quite a shock mm. that, has, that has made people face well what do i really want mm. and perhaps becoming more assertive about how they're going to get it um would that would that be the way you, you yeah i think um i think there's certainly during the pandemic where there was a lot of uh, cons- constriction in mm. um, in organisations. It 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 wasn't necessarily then. I think people were sort of holding on to their yeah, yeah, jobs. Yeah. But I think suddenly, when when we move out of that and we're in this new hybrid world, it's yeah. people have got a lot more confident. And I get a sense right. that the power is more with the employee rather yes. than yeah. um rather than the company so I've, I, interesting i've i've got some stats which um there was a randstad survey which said that 69 percent of people are confident that they could get another job wow um which wow. is huge that, that, that is massive yeah um and and the other one was um from uh it was uk labor force and it's uh one point Zero, well, one million people moved jobs between July and September 2021. Yeah. And that was in the same industry. Yeah. So they weren't necessarily looking for brand new careers. Sure. It's about how do I get that, that um, uh, feel valued for the work that I yeah. do. Um, so I think the whole cost of living is now kicking in and that's, that's causing sure. a lot of anxiety. People are thinking about their salaries a a lot more now and so how are people thinking about their jobs as a whole Sue? because i've noticed in the age groups uh Mm. there's more for example we will accept there's more a requirement for purpose social contribution let's say uh the younger that you 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 go down the um the employment age groups so there's there's more willingness just to say well i'll move around i'll find somewhere i feel good as well as Mm. Uh, as long as the money is off the table, as long as I'm earning a certain amount, then I'm actually looking for much more than just the traditional money career ladder. Um, so what have you noticed about the way many people are thinking about their jobs now? How has that changed, mm. especially, as you said, in the last uh, in the last year or so? Well, I think definitely flexibility has kicked in. And mm. again, there are some uh, amazing quotes from CEOs saying that if if we don't offer flexibility, Right. But our competitor is, then I'm more likely to expect that person to leave the organisation as, as right. a result, and and quite rightly so. So I think there is this this flexibility is really important, um, and I don't think I'm not really picking up that people want to go back full time, but they just have uh, have see, noticed the value that they're getting from being at home. Yeah, yeah, and all those benefits, but also still wanting some connection. Sure. And, and I think when we come on to subsequent um, videos in the series, looking mm. at how we build those connections in a different way to sure. how we have traditionally done it. So sure. I think we need to be a lot more innovative as well. Um, you also mentioned about, you know, is there a difference in age does this mm. impact more on uh, gen z i think i think uh, in some ways some again some of the stats in the us um there was another statistic that i picked up about a job seekers um survey that was done and 50 percent of uk wo- uh, sorry us workers sure. are planning to move jobs in the next um three to six months and 50 percent of that group was gen z okay so there's so, some some color correlation in that yeah. I've, I've heard the figure of around about 50 60 percent of people in the uk are actively looking for other opportunities whether yes. they take them or not 
Yeah. Um, and I've always I'm, felt that that was more pushing down the, you know, down to the younger age groups rather than the older age groups. Um, I, I would suggest it's it's across all age groups. It's across all. Because I think, um, you know, people in their 50s, for instance, are thinking about their quality of life. Right. Um, so am I getting having that flexibility sure. means I can I can balance all the other things in my life. I can see my kids more. So, True. You, you know, I, th I think there is a big push. And, yeah. I think and there's been a massive move out of cities, isn't there? Yeah. Uh, which if you're in a city, you, you possibly not in the younger age group. Yeah, because you can afford it. So, yeah. so you're probably yeah. in the middle age group if you're thinking of moving away from a city area and that. Yeah, you're probably right. It does a, it does cut across all. Mm. I think people are generally asking, they're demanding more. Um, perhaps COVID gave us this shock of experiencing that, you know, we really ought to focus on what we want and not just get into a routine and a habit um, for the sake of it. Uh, therefore, more questions are asked. Yeah. Um, then with Brexit and less labour, labour mm -hmm. movement is, is tougher at the moment. Yeah. Um, then perhaps people have the courage now to start asking questions. There's yeah. certainly more assertiveness, isn't there, on, on mm. personal demands from, from people as they're going through the social media generation who, who have, in a way, really good expectations, perhaps unrealistic sometimes, but they do at least have assertiveness. Mm. Mm. And, and um, you look at LinkedIn and uh, the posts on LinkedIn, it's all about this is what we're doing around engagement. This is, right. um, you know, and, and those aspects of what is your what is your purpose? I see a lot in my maybe it's my own LinkedIn feed, <laughs> but, right. um, uh, but I do see a lot more around um, helping yourself. Sure. Uh, what do you want? from your careers and sure. you know a, a lot of that it seems there was uh, I, I just get a sense there's more of that coming coming yeah. out through the feeds prompting yeah. questions I think really prompting ourselves they are and uh, and I think um that, that's really useful scene set Sue because as we move into um the next couple of videos we'll be talking about so what do we do about this situation mm -hmm. but for now I think we agree is it is it's quite a churn um, and I think the key word that's jumped out from what you've said for me is, is flexibility. And it's, it's the flexibility, certainly of senior management, mm. the even company owners, senior management, middle management to, to adapt fairly quickly to the changing demands of the workforce or, or will get economically hit. As, as you said, the CEOs are beginning to recognize, mm. you know, mm. we, we need to build in flexibility because it's a key element of selling uh, yes. selling the environment of our business isn't it the environment of our organization mm. so thank you sue for your time thank you very much for your thoughts um, and we'll be back in uh, the next video talking about some of the things we might be able to do so thank right. you everybody for watching appreciate your time and um, we'll talk to you again soon uh,